Oil-fired sealed combustion space heaters are some of the most popular heaters you'll find in the state of Alaska. And some examples of these types of heating systems would be the Toyo stove and the monitor heater. And the reasons these are so popular is they're relatively simple to install, so they're great for remote locations. They're reliable and they're energy efficient. And so in this video, we've got a specialist on board who's going to open one of these systems up and he's going to show us some of the things he looks for when he does diagnostic work, maintenance, and repair. But for starters, we're going to cover the fuel system because if you don't have good fuel delivery, everything else down the road may not work properly either. A lot of times when you have a problem with a Toyo stove, it may actually start at the tank. So but today, Dave and I are going to take a look at a tank and do some troubleshooting there first. Sometimes your problems can be solved pretty easily without ever having to go in and look at the stove. So here we're looking at a typical fuel system for a Toyo stove. This is an outdoor tank. It's mounted on a stand. And uh, a lot of times the problems start here rather than inside, especially if it gets colder out all of a sudden your Toyo stove stops working. Well, maybe something's going on with the fuel line rather than the stove itself. So the fuel delivery starts right here at the tank. So this tank has some fuel in it. We don't quite know how much. We'll, we'll take a look at that later. But uh, Dave, give us some pointers how the fuel makes its way to the stove. So always have a shutoff valve um, right off the tank. And that's followed up by a fuel filter. And with the shutoff valve, that allows us to, to service the fuel filter and put a new filter element in it periodically. This line is installed, as you can see, it's got a big loop in it. Um, you'll see smaller loops sometimes with smaller pipe. But they, they put kind of a little bit of a spiral to it or some sort of a, a loop like this so that the, the tank can be on ground that's uh, gonna move a little bit because it's, it's not on the same ground at the, as the house and this gives it a flexible connection uh, to the house. The other thing you'll notice is that it's, it's, it's bent and installed so it's continuously downward and nowhere along the pipe does it go up and then back down. So that any air bubble that's in this pipe, it, the air bubble will float to the top of the pipe and in and up to the top of the, the tank. So that this type of setup doesn't trap any, any air bubbles. The Toyo stove is right on the other side of this wall and the fuel line goes directly into the, into the fitting on the back of the Toyo stove. The Toyo stove doesn't have any ability to, to lift or, or suck oil uphill out of a fuel tank. So it has to be fed by gravity. So the bottom of your fuel tank has to be 16 inches above the inlet on the back of the stove so that the fuel pressure in the tank has, has enough head pressure, as they say, to uh, push fuel to the back of the stove. This is a really nice style of fuel filter in that it has a, cl a clear ho housing. And the housing lets us see if, you know, kind of the condition of the tank. Is there a lot of rust or whatnot coming in? we'll start to see that in the bottom of this sediment bulb. Uh, the other thing that we'll see in here is, is water. Um, the oil will float on the water, so the water will float to the bottom of this, and it'll, it'll build up in the bottom of it. And that can be drained with this pitcock right here. If we're draining this, Dave, how often would we uh, check the filter, change it out? Well, this is a, a really nice setup in that you can, you can really see the filter. Um, and you'll get us, if, if you maintain your tank, you'll get a sense for how much sediment you periodically have to drain. Um, and if it's, if it's quite often, you might change it once a year. Um, otherwise, uh, you can keep an eye on the filter. You can really see its condition, and it may be every, every three or four years to change it. Uh, if you don't have a filter housing like this, then um, you, know, you could change it once a year as a matter of course, or, or once every two years. It's a fairly uh, tall tank. Getting up there with the ladder and putting a stick in the tank is, can be done to check your fuel level, but they put a convenient way to check the fuel level in this tank with a sight tube. And it's, it's teed off after the filter, and it's, it's got a ball valve um, to keep the 
the fuel turned off to the sight tube when you're not actually checking the fuel in the sight tube. But uh, we'll turn the fuel on to the, t to, the, to the system. So we've got fuel flowing out of the tank. And the fuel level in the tank will equalize in the sight tube. You can see the this tank is uh, is about three quarters full. So now that we've inspected the tank and the fittings and the filter and we followed the line back to the building and we've seen the line slopes properly, we'll take a look at here at the uh, exhaust on the Toyo stove. This is another external check we can make. This is where the air goes in. This is called a concentric vent. So the actual flue gas is coming out of the center. And the exact same amount of, of flue gas that it pumps out the center is the same amount of intake air that it needs for combustion, which will go uh, in this outer pipe. And if this gets plugged with snow, um, it won't be getting the air that it needs to burn. Let's see, if you're in a climate where there's blowing snow and you could pack this full, you probably want to inspect this pretty regularly or, or what, build a shielded enclosure around it perhaps? Or just check over the summer to see if um, uh, wasps haven't filled it up with uh, mud or um, those types of things or uh, spider webs built up in there and then uh, as it draws air in, that spider web could catch and fill up with um, uh, the cottonwood silk and stuff that's uh, around, flowing around in the spring and stuff. The other thing that you can check, if it's installed correctly, this pipe, you know, both of these pipes are pointed uh, downward uh, toward the outside of the building. Because as the cold air goes in around the, uh, uh, this inner pipe filled with the flue gas, there's water vapor in the flue gas and it can condense at really cold uh, temperatures. And when it does, um, it should run out and, and drip uh, off this pipe onto the ground. If for some reason or another it was uh, not tipped uh, down and out away from the building, but, but either level or back in, it might begin to glaciate up and, and might uh, be posing a restriction for the exhaust gas coming out. But just, just make sure it has a, a clear way to get uh, flue gas out and combustion area. In this next segment, we've got a special guest. The Woodway here in Fairbanks has brought us Greg McLean from Rural Energy Enterprises in Anchorage to show us what he looks at when he performs basic maintenance on a Toyo stove. And what Greg's going to cover with us is some of the basic things that you can do yourself as diagnostics and repair, especially if you're in a, rem in a remote location, to see if you can get your stove up and running before it has to go in and be serviced. And he's also going to give us some really good pointers that will ensure better long-term performance. We're actually going to take one of these little guys and open it up and see what can be done in terms of maintenance and repair. So now we've got the Toyo angled to the side and we're going to look at where the fuel line comes in and at the inline filter. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and service the screen right here. I'm going to make sure that the fuel is shut off in the back of the tank. Let me come on in here and I can pull the two screws out. Here's one. It's really important when we're doing this that we have our paper towels or we have some type of rag. Should we spill any fuel in here, we need to be able to clean this up right away. So now that we've got that out, we can stick our finger in here, we can pull out the gasket. And then down inside here, out comes my sump screen. There it is sticking out there a little bit. I want to go ahead and pull this out. Note to self as I'm pulling it out, the open end is facing towards where the oil comes in and the back side has the spring loaded piece of stainless steel and the item right here. So what I want to do with this now folks, when I have it at this point right here, is I want to take some fresh fuel and a Q-tip and from the inside I want to go ahead and clean that out or if I happen to have a can of carburetor cleaner, then I can take this and I can spray this through the carburetor with the carburetor cleaner through this mesh, clean the material out, making it drop out. So I definitely need to do this outside. And I want to look at my fuel and make sure I don't see anything unusual in there when I've drained that. Let's say that when I took this out, that this was all filled full of rust 
and was oh. water stained in there. So if that happens, then I know that I have a major problem with my fuel tank and it's something that's going to need to be taken care of. More hmm. than likely, if we have a problem with the tank, there's only one way to solve the problem with the tank. You must replace the tank. So now that we've cleaned and inspected the fuel system where it comes into the Toyo and drained the sump, we're going to take a look at the front of the stove at the burner components. If we look on this particular stove, right down below here where my index finger is, hmm. we have a gasket that goes around right here. And this is called the joint packing gasket. The joint packing gasket should be a solid one-piece gasket as we're seeing it in here. If we take our cover off and we notice that this gasket is cracked and that we have some holes in it, then that joint packing gasket needs to be replaced. Things that can cause that to crack out usually is in relationship towards our flue pipe. Remember, we want to have a minimum of 20 inches from the bottom of the flue pipe to the top of the drifted snow level, or snow that takes the possibility of drifting in there. Also, sometimes in high wind situations, we'll also cause that to crack by forcing the flue gases back down inside the piece of equipment. So our flue is of extreme importance that we're gonna be up high enough and that we're gonna try and be out of the, out of the head strong winds. It could be the fact that in some high wind applications, as in the Toyotomi directions, they're talking about coming out with a four-point mounting system and putting a piece of plate steel approximately 16 inches in front of this to give it that windshield also. Okay, so then it's coming in and pulling air from the sides, from not the directly. From the sides, correct. Okay. And it's not going to have the wind directly blow at it. So it is really, really important when we're going to be putting a Toyo stove in that we are always thinking about the drifting of the snow and making sure that our flue is above that. So now that we've inspected the packing gasket, where do we go from there? The next thing that we're going to take a look at here is, is the flame sensor. And in order to pull this wire off right here, if we take and we come down a little bit and we just push right straight down, then the clip comes off nice and evenly. We have two screws back inside here. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull these two screws out of here. There's one screw. Here's our second screw. Now, when we go to remove this, it's important that we take this and we want to rotate this to the three o'clock position, and then we can easily slip this very, very dirty flame sensor out right here. So when I have this off, what I would like to do with them is I'm going to take a piece of sanding cloth and I'm just gonna sand this up and I'm gonna get this nice and clean when I go to put that back in there. So now, once again, when I go to put this flame sensor back in there, I'm going to come at the same way that I took it out. So I'm going to have this at the 3 o'clock position, and that way I can put it back into the hole, get it nested in there, and then rotate it on down back to my 3 o'clock position. Then I'm going to take my bracket right here, coming up onto the bottom, coming and putting my screws back into my mounting bracket right there. The next item that we want to take a look at is going to be our hot source igniter, which is down below right here. And when we're looking at this, we really have to have a good look at it. And I've noticed on this particular one right here that we have a crack in the side of this gasketing ceiling material right here. There's a very, very well pronounced crack in here. I believe that this piece of equipment has not been serviced for quite a number of years. About, about eight years, actually. About eight years. And so here we are with a Toyo stove that's been untouched for eight years. And boy, this is a this is pretty nice, clean stove. But we are seeing some ramifications inside here of the fact that the stove has not been serviced for eight years. And I'm just going to wiggle it very, very gently. And if I have a problem in there, what's going to happen is it's going to fall right off the end. So let's see what happens here, folks. Oh, no. Oh, look at that. Just like I said was going to happen in there. Look at that. It has split right in there. And it has split so hard it has broken the tabs free from the hot service igniter. So we're going to have to replace our hot service igniter. We're just going to go and pull the four screws out of this right here. 
Oh, look at how even our gasket is crumbling. Let's see if we can get it out of there. Here's our hot surf igniter right here. And so we can see when we're looking at this that, you know what, it really was time to go ahead and address this issue because even our gasket is cracked around here. And so, you know, we have a potential with this of having like some type of exhaust scent inside the house. So it is really, really important that, you know, that we did do what we've, what we've done here today. What's the lifespan on an igniter like that? Lifespan on an igniter, well, is about eight years <laughs> <laughs> on a non-service stove. But yeah. really, if we have clean fuel in there, we're really taking care of our fuel. We're really keeping our flue nice and clean by vacuuming the outside of that flue off, the stinger portion once a year. We're probably going to get about 10 years out of that igniter. Let's be proactive, okay? Let's go buy a new igniter and at least have it at our house. So if we are going to change this component out ourselves, yeah. we got that component there ready to go. Let's be proactive about this. Not, not 40 below and you have not to go. Not 40 below looking for igniter on a Sunday evening is just yeah. not a good time. And these are things that are going to assure us of a good long life in a happy Toyo stove. Sealed combustion oil-fired space heating systems have a great reputation for being tough and reliable. But what that means is a lot of times they're out of sight and out of mind and we just forget about them until they break down. So hopefully in this video, we've been able to present some proactive maintenance tips that we can engage in and some diagnostics and repair that will help our systems perform optimally and last a long time.